Good morning students. Today we are coming to learn about how to do fundoscopy, looking at the fundus of the eyeball. In other ways, how to examine and see the vitreous and then the retina. Right, so we are going to go step by step. Here you are. To do fundoscopy, you need an ophthalmoscope and this is what the ophthalmoscope is. Look at how it looks like, okay? So, there are thermoscopic settings when you want to do fundoscopy. There are several lights and designs on the thermoscope which you have to take note of. This large light, when do you use it? Use the large light when the pupil has been dilated with midriatics and is big. So, you lose the large light to examine. You can sometimes use the medium light. When do you use it? Use the medium light. When the individual has not had any midriatics in the eye, the pupil is normal size, but the person is in mid-illuminated room, right? That's when you use the medium light. This is the medium light. When you use the small light, use the small light when no midriatics have been used have been used in the person's pupil, and the person or the patient being examined is found. At a place which is very bright in that case use what the small light now when do you use the half light use the half light when there is opacity half of the cornea is opaque the other half is transparent or half of the pupil is blocked by something else and the other half is transparent or half of the crystalline lens is opaque and the other half is well, transparent you use this so that you don't get reflection from the opacity back to you that's why you use what the half light the red free light is basically the green light it brings about sharp contrast and makes visibility better all right it made the image appear as though it were what, black and white when you use it okay Use a red free, which is the green light, when you want to get fine details of one, the blood vessels on the retina, two, proper assessment of the nerve fiber layer, which is the most superficial layer, or the internal limiting membrane. Okay. Three, you use it when you want to have appropriate examination of and or see the heart exudates. Okay. Dot and blood hemorrhages okay drusen so fine details you can easily see them especially the nature and appearance of blood vessels on the retina that is when you use the red free light when you use a slit light yes you use the slit light when you want to define or see contour lesions on the retina very well okay so the blue light is basically used when you are performing what fluorescent angioscopy it's not fluorescent angiography this is fluorescent angioscopy okay then you use the blue light to assess the lesions very well so when you use a grid you use a grid when you want to properly determine the distance between or have rough idea of the distance or the space between one lesion and then the other so these are the settings you need to have. So to do fundoscopy, for now, your hands are free. You don't have a thermoscope in your hand, all right? And then I will ask you to raise your right hand and then count four fingers, saying that right, 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 right. You've counted four fingers at the right hand. What do I mean? The first right the first two rights are for the patient and the second two rights are for the examiner or vice versa it doesn't matter who takes what first all right so let's assume the first two rights are for the examiner what do i mean the examiner the first two rights here means that one the examiner holds the ophthalmoscope with his right hand Two, the second right means that the examiner uses his right eye. So right hand and then right eye for the examiner. The examiner uses the right hand.
hand and use the right eye okay the other two right which are for the patient means that the, pay, the examiner is standing at the right side slightly to the right side of the patient and the examiner is examining the right eye of the patient so right eye of the patient is being examined right side of the patient is being utilized by the examiner okay the examiner uses his right eye and hold the ophthalmoscope with his right hand and the same thing is true with the left side so if your free left hand okay in the air count four lefts with each left correspond to one finger go left 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 you've counted four left what does it mean it means that the first two lefts are for the examiner what do they mean the examiner holds the ophthalmoscope with his left hand that's what the left hand stands for second left stands for the fact that the examiner uses his left eye to examine right the last two left the third left okay the last two left are for the patient so the third left corresponds to the examiner using the left side of the patient in other words he's standing a bit towards the left side of the patient okay and the last but not the least left corresponds to the left eye so what do i mean the examiner uses his right eye holds the ophthalmoscope in his right hand stands slightly to the right side of the patient to examine the patient right eye similarly the examiner in the left side holds the ophthalmoscope with his left hand uses his left eye stands a bit to the left side of the patient and what does he do examines the patient's left eye so the examiner stands at an arm's length an arm's length away from the patient the best way to do this is to put your left arm on the patient's forehead okay that's at the right side and then go back making sure you tie the patient's forehead that is standing at an arm's length put the ophthalmoscope light on and this is a dilated people so use the big light okay and then ask the patient to look at the target straight ahead of him or her and then look straight you see what we call the fundus reflex some people call it orange reflex okay and that is the first step and this is orange reflex all right correct orange reflex but this is wrong all right this is wrong orange reflex this is correct orange reflex it means that there's a disease here and most likely this is the correct one so the examiner if he's examining the right eye once the left hand is on the patient's forehead uses the thumb to lift up the patient's upper lid and then starts following the orange reflex but on the ophthalmoscope he puts the he put the forefinger at where the lenses are remember the forefinger doesn't stay down like the other fingers the right forefinger holding the ophthalmoscope which is at the right of his right eye but the forefinger must be at where the lenses are exactly the way the examiner has done here and the left hand doesn't rest it is put on the patient's forehead and he the examiner uses the thumb of the left hand to lift the patient's upper eyelid okay so that is it so the right 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 is happening here patient is using the examiner is using his right eye, holds the ophthalmoscope in his right hand, stands a bit to the right side of the patient and examines the patient's right eye. So, in this picture, he was from an arm's length getting closer to the patient's eye. But in this other one, he has got it as close. In fact, he can get closer still following the orange reflex. All right? That is it and in the end this is what he's expected to see on the patient's fundus or on the patient's retina 
so this is the how the retina looks like it's orange in appearance okay look at the optic disc it's a bit nasal all right to the macula the macula is temporally located so this is the macula which is located temporally but to the nasal side is the optic disc look at its color traversing through the disc are some blood vessels and there is a pale zone within the disc we call it what capping capping okay of the disc so there's a pale zone within the disc we call it what capping of the disc okay so that's the optic disc is the whole area that's the optic disc all right and the margin of the disc is where the cursor is moving that's the disc margin and the whole area is the disc the pale zone within the disc is called capping okay so how the retina veins and arteries in other books you may find them in another modern books retina venules and arterioles so they both run same course but you realize that unlike the veins the arteries are smaller and the arteries will be found coursing over okay the veins so they run along the same course but the veins are a bit bigger and the arteries are a bit smaller apart from that the arteries will be found moving on top of the veins apart from that the arteries have thicker walls and the veins have, have uh, smaller walls okay so re also remember that the arteries carry oxygenated blood while the veins carry deoxygenated blood so temporal to the disc okay is what the macula and at the center of the macula is what the fovea and as we do the thermoscopy of endoscopy we see a reflex coming from the fovea we call it what uh fovea reflex okay so attention to the optic disc cap in here okay every time when you examine look for the cap in the disc what is the cap in the disc is the pillar zone which is found within the optic this student i bring my class to an end here and then keep watching the video and get better understanding and if you need clarification i'm always available right so that is it